everyone and welcome to my channel. Thanks for checking this video out. In this video, we're going to be learning more about the Malaysian cat gecko. In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the information regarding the species as well as going into some of their care requirements needed for keeping them in captivity. My mom got me a popsicle. They're such a unique species of gecko and are currently one of my favorite pet reptiles that I own. I know I'm not allowed to pick favorites, but I did. They are kind of just like these adorable alien cold-blooded cats. Yeah, they're cool. Like now, unfortunately, they do tend to be wild caught and wild caught specimens are said to have a heavy parasite load and as well can stress easily. So care is said to be kind of difficult. They do have a bit of specific care requirements, but I personally don't think they are the most difficult species to look after. Given the proper care requirements, these guys can thrive in captivity and live a good 10 plus years. Alrighty, let me tell you guys about Salem and tell you how I acquired my my Malaysian cat gecko. This was a bit of a crazy story. So I like to reptile on a budget and I spend a lot of my days just going through Kijiji looking for reptiles that need to be rehomed and as well as some cheap supplies. Came across an ad on my day of kijiji -ing. The ad was for the Malaysian cat gecko and for its bioactive terrarium as well. I was like, Yes. Oh my god, this is what I wanted. Malaysian cat gecko is a species that I've been wanting to own for a while now, so I got really excited when I came across this ad. So I call up my friend and I ask her if she can drive me all the way to point B because I don't drive, at least not yet. I am working on it. I actually have one of my road tests burked, burked, burked. I actually have one of my, <laughs> one of my road tests booked for September. So I call up my friend and she's like, yeah, sure, I'll drive you all the way to this place. I confirmed the night before with this lady that I would be there around 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. In the morning, I message her and I say, hey, I'm on my way, what's your exact address? She doesn't reply, but we're still an hour and a half away. So I look at the ad and I'm like, you know what, just go to this destination. This is probably her general location. We drive for an hour and a half and we get there and still no reply. I waited three hours before she replied. I have such bad anxiety. I was about to cry. I'm pretty sure I did cry. I was absolutely losing it. Like losing it. The events that unfolded within those three hours will probably forever stay between me and my friend. I think I scared my friend just a little bit that day. There was a lot going on in my personal life currently, and this gecko was kind of like the one thing that I was really, really looking forward to. And I was gonna be so bloody disappointed if I left that city empty-handed with no gecko. At some point when we were just about to give up and go home, she finally replied. I was like, I'm getting my gecko. I really wanted to say something. I really wanted to do something. No, don't do it. You're a better person than that. I just smiled made a small exchange, gave her the money, and left. I just really wanted my gecko at that point, and I was just so happy that I had finally got it. I had him in my hands. I brought him back home, and he settled in quite well. I've had him for about three or four months now, so I thought I would make a video and share some of the information and care that it takes to look after these little guys. All right, so enough with the talking. Let's get into the information and care for the Malaysian cat gecko. Malaysian cat geckos are one of the most fascinating pet reptiles I have ever seen. Cat geckos are a species of gecko that can be found in Southeast Asia. They could be found in countries such as Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Cambodia, and Thailand. 
This nocturnal animal gets its name cat gecko because of its habit to sleep with its tail curled around its body, much like a cat. They're typically semi-arboreal, meaning that they spend some of their life in trees, and the only arboreal species of gecko in the family Eublepharidae. I don't know if I said that right, so I'm gonna just put the family name here. Which is the family of geckos that common leopard geckos, banded geckos, and fat-tailed geckos are from. They are considered to be one of the more primitive geckos and is physically rather similar in body structure to the few fossils of early geckos which have been discovered. Recent research suggests that even though they had the makings of adhesive toe pads in the past, they followed a different evolutionary path along the way. cool little characteristic and feature about these guys is that they are equipped with opposable, retractable claws that aid them in climbing small branches and twigs. They also have a prehensile tail which helps them grab onto things and help them climb too. Females are usually larger, up to 7 inches, while males are usually smaller, generally around 4 inches long. With the proper care and husbandry, these animals can live a good 10 or more years in captivity. My cat gecko came with his enclosure and he's being housed in 18 by 18 by 18 inch exoterra. Now whether you're housing your cat gecko in a glass tank or a Rubbermaid plastic storage container, they should be about these dimensions for one or two cat geckos. This is what his enclosure looked like when I brought him home. I didn't change it up too much, but I did add more plants and more branches and things to climb on. So let's go into his enclosure and take a better look. Malaysian cat geckos like cooler, humid rainforest habitats and like to climb, so you're going to want to set up the habitat to try and match their natural environment as much as possible. Now the types of furnishing that you're going to want to give your Malaysian cat gecko is definitely lots of things to climb on. So I have lots of branches in here, I would actually like to get a lot more, but for now I have some thin branches and some thick branches to be used for climbing. Additional furnishing you'll want to include is some foliage and places to hide. This will help your gecko feel more secure and make the tank look more visually appealing. You can use live or fake plants. I personally just like the look of live plants more and they also help with the humidity. So I don't have much of a green thumb so these are the few plant species that I kind of have in all of my tanks because for some reason they're the only ones that will grow for me. But back here, um, I just have a spider plant that is growing. Then over here I have what I believe is called bellipom. And for a while I wasn't able to get that to grow, but all of a sudden it's growing for me, so thank you very much. And then I have um, some devil's ivy here. This stuff grows pretty well for most people I find. Um, I don't have really any additional lighting for these. I actually have no lighting at all for this tank. I only have some lighting up here for filming purposes. I find these plants are not too picky and can handle low light. I just have this little window in my reptile room and not too much light comes through. So the little bit of light that does come through is enough to grow these plants. I've killed like air plants and succulents. So I'm gonna go ahead and recommend these plants for anybody that's not good with plants. 
and for an enclosure that has low light. And then I also have some homemade leaf litter in here as well for the isopods and springtails to hide under and eat as well. See, they've kind of gone at that one a little bit. One more plant in here. I don't know what it is, but it does not want to grow. So we're just gonna, I don't know what we're gonna do with it. What are you gonna do with you, bud? During the day, your cat gecko is most likely going to be resting. They prefer to rest and hide under things like plants, leaf litter, cork bark and round flats, and other decorations make great places for hiding. These things should be kept in mind when you're setting up your gecko habitat so that your gecko is comfortable and able to exhibit their natural behavior. Let's talk a little bit about the substrate. So you're going to want to use a substrate that's going to retain moisture and also not cause a choking or impaction hazard. Once again, this tank came with the gecko and was already set up, so I don't know what kind of soil is in here, but I would personally recommend either Eco Earth or Reptis Soil. Oh, oh, look, at, look at them all. Oh, hello. Hi. Oh. Yes. Ah, there's a little world in my hands. You should also probably include a small water dish. They might not use it, but at least they have the option to do so. Do you guys want to see a surprise? Wow. Look at all those little eyes I have. Oh, they're so cute. Hello, friends. Thanks for keeping everything clean, guys. Even though we provided a water dish, cat geckos do get most of their water by collecting water droplets from cage furnishings and the sides of walls from misting. I personally will miss Salem's enclosure about once a day in the evenings so that when he comes out at night he's able to enjoy those fresh water droplets. But it all depends on your enclosure and where you live uh, as to how often you will have to mist the enclosure. Misting is very important to the health and well-being of these geckos. They will develop a lot of health issues if their humidity requirements are not met. Relative humidity should be kept between 75 and 85%, but on occasions for short periods of time it may reach as high as 90% or drop as low as 50 When it comes to the temperatures, Malaysian cat geckos are most comfortable at room temperatures at around 65 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit and don't usually require additional heating. And as I said before, they are nocturnal, so they don't really need any type of lighting. But if you want a light for display purposes, or so that you can kind of make a day and nighttime cycle, then you can feel free to do so. I'm from Canada, so during, say, the winter months, during those colder months, it does get a lot drier and a lot cooler, so I do have to watch a lot of the temperatures and humidities going on in my reptile enclosures. Now, you're going to want to use distilled or reverse osmosis water. Now, this is because this species is prone to what is described by keepers as kidney stones, or just really hard discolored urates. They aren't studied enough for keepers to have a conclusive answer, but it's believed that this problem is avoidable by the most part by reducing mineral intake in their water. Here you can see I have a separate labeled water bottle just for my cat gecko. They do best when kept individually and only put together for breeding. Some may do well in pairs, but that would be for you to closely monitor and ensure that they are getting along. Some keepers on the internet talked about how they would keep their cat gecko separate, but would put them together only during the breeding season. It is recommended that juvenile cat geckos should be fed about three to four appropriately sized food items at least every other day, making sure there is never too many prey items in the enclosure. Too many food items can bother and stress the animal out. Adults should be fed about four to six appropriately sized prey items about three to four times a week. They will also require a vitamin and calcium dusting with their food about every third feeding. 
Now we're going to be moving on to the handling portion of the video. So guys, this is my Malaysian cat gecko. I really don't like to handle him often because these guys are so fragile and they really don't like to be handled too often. Since I've gotten him, this is probably only the fourth time that I've held him. So I've held him solidly only like once a month. You can see they're pretty handable, but they don't like to be handled. I'm gonna go put this little guy back because honestly, he's probably not happy with me right now about me holding him. He was trying to get away from me when I picked him up. So I'm gonna go put him back and probably not touch him for another month. This now brings us to an end of our video. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. I really appreciate it and I hope that you guys learned something new and found this pretty informative. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and check out my Instagram which I will put right here. And I hope that you all enjoyed this video.